my investigative reporters did a piece up in uh, John City on WJHL TV. What started with a community watchdog investigation is now just a governor's signature away from becoming law in Tennessee. Thanks for choosing News Channel 11 at 6. I'm Sarah Diamond. And I'm Josh Smith. Great to have you tonight. The state House and Senate unanimously passed a bill last night that will impact every health care worker in the volunteer state. And it is all the result of Nate Morbido's investigation into drug addicted nurses. Well, remember, we discovered nurses were able to keep working with patients even while under investigation for drug diversion. This legislation hopes to change that, and not just for nurses, for doctors, pharmacists, EMTs, and all other medical professionals. If they fail a drug test, they'll report directly to a treatment program. Those who complete treatment will be able to return to work. Those who don't will risk suspension of their license. I feel like it's an assault. Randall Fogelman deserved better. In the years leading up to his death, the bedridden partial quadriplegic became a victim. He was in continual pain, you know, for years, chronic pain. His nurse, who later called herself a drug addict and pleaded guilty, took his morphine, causing him more pain. I feel pretty strongly about it, uh, very strongly. We first talked with Fogelman's niece last fall. More than six months later, Mary Lynn Conkin says she's relieved lawmakers are taking steps to protect other patients. I think anything is better than it was. Eyes 88, no days. House Bill 1067 have received a constitutional majority hereby declare pass. In two separate votes Tuesday night. Mr. Clerk, record the vote. I has 31, no nays. Lawmakers unanimously approved a new process of accountability in Tennessee. We're reporting impaired providers, we're evaluating them, we're separating from patients. Pending the governor's approval, the legislation would require any health care worker who refuses to submit to a drug test or tests positive and doesn't have a prescription or valid medical reason to report to a substance abuse peer assistance or treatment program within three days of the failed drug test. I think that there could be more. Although Konkin feels the legislation falls short in that it doesn't require investigations after every failed drug test, she is thankful it requires treatment. If they want to keep their license, I mean, that's the least that they can do. <laughs> so, you know, hopefully, you know, the treatment will be effective. Sullivan County Deputy District Attorney Jean Perrin was among the first to raise fears about the current system and its failure to protect patients from addicts who have access to drugs. It's extremely important that we not have medical professionals that are impaired. Lawmakers listen to his concerns. When a health care pr practitioner fails a drug test and it's determined they are truly a bad actor, then they are referred to a rehabilitation center. And if they successfully complete that, they can go on. Otherwise, their license is suspended. They hope this bill not only removes those bad actors from a patient's bedside, but also secures them the help they need. Nate Morabito, News Channel 11, in your corner. In addition to requiring rehab, the bill would also make it easier for hospitals, clinics, and other employers to share disciplinary information about employees with other hiring companies.